Today, we're going to talk about surviving multiplication. And no, I'm not talking second grade math. Good morning, son. How are you? Skies above. Gee, it's great to be alive and love. Congratulations. You're having another baby. At least, I'm assuming you are since you're here watching this. You're probably here wondering if you can survive a second baby. And you know what? You can't. And that is because of some of these tips I'm fixing to share with you. Number one, get nap times to align as soon as possible. And sleep train, the one that is the easiest to sleep train, into aligning the naps as much as you can. If your oldest is easier to train, try to get your oldest nap time to align with your youngest nap time, then just kind of stimulate them to stay awake a little bit longer so the baby and the oldest can fall asleep at the same time. When this happens, it gives you a moment of free time to where you can take care of yourself or do things that need to get done. Once you get their nap times aligned and locked in, do not break it. Just don't. Tell everybody, that they've got to work around the baby's nap times, okay? Nap time is sacred. Number two, get your oldest involved in helping. Now let's get real for a minute. They're going to feel a little bummed getting bumped from their pedestal. Before it was all about them, and now it's not. It's going to be a rude awakening. But you know how you can make that little rude awakening? Just a little less, a little less burn? Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, burning, burning on fire, pants on fire. How did we get here? You can help them feel like a hero for helping to take care of your newest baby. You can have them take the diapers to the trash. You can have them fetch the baby's pacifier or a toy or a blanket. Sit them down and tell them, this baby is our baby. We need to love and protect them. Make your oldest feel like a hero helping out and it'll burn just a little bit less. The next tip is to spend time with your oldest. Not all the nap times are going to align. You're going to have one major nap for the two of them, and that's when you want to align. But you're going to have a lot of little naps with the newest baby that aren't going to line up, and your oldest is going to be awake. Now, I know they say sleep while the baby sleeps. But that ship has sailed with baby number two. And let's be honest, it never happened with baby number one. We never got to sleep while well, the baby sleep. What a silly notion. So instead, what you do do, what you do do, do do, what you do instead is you get a cup of coffee and a coloring book and you sit down and you color with your big kid. And they have that special time to make life hurt a little less. Now that mommy is giving little baby a lot of attention. Number five, expect your toddler to act up. Don't worry, you're not a bad parent. Well, actually, you might be. But that's not why your child is acting up more than normal. Their life is changing. They're little. They don't understand. It's just going to happen, and you should expect it to happen. And you shouldn't feel guilty for it. So don't give up and give in when those new bad habits or old habits that they're going back to come back up. Let them know the same rules still apply, and eventually their conduct will be back in order. That is if it was in order to start with. Next one. Have a mom friend that you go out with often to do play dates. Now I know what you're thinking. Being out of the house with everything that's going on is probably the last thing you're picturing in your mind you want to do, but trust me, it is helpful. One, you are getting fellowship with another mom in the same boat as you. Two, it's really helpful for your oldest child to get out, play with other kids, and release their wiggles. They're being entertained. You are getting fellowship, and you're able to hold your baby at the same time, and it will help refresh your mind. Unless you're a true introvert, then I'm sorry. <laughs> you will never have alone time again until your kids have moved out. For your sanity... Have special activities for your big kid to do. Things such as coloring, those large wooden beads that you string through, locks and fastening boards, coloring, magnetic fishes, a new toy. Those are all great ways to distract and stimulate your older child when you're helping 
the little one, so that maybe they don't notice they're so busy. And they're learning to entertain themselves, which is an essential skill for life. Pull them only out on special times so that it doesn't become old. They know that there's a special time that they're going to play with that toy and they get excited about it and they're distracted for a little bit. Stay away from magnetic sand, Play-Doh, and glitter. Just, just, just don't do it. Card tips. Get the child who's most likely to run out last. For me right now, this is my one-year-old. My one-year-old is the most likely to run away from me giggling. Bad idea with cars around, you know? I get my oldest out first, who is a little bit more obedient, and then my chunky monkey out last, who's most likely to run away and become a pancake. But for you, if you have a baby, they're not waddling away from you. So, get your baby out first, and your crazy toddler out second. Don't worry about parking close to the store. In fact, what you should be worried about is parking near where they put the carts away. That's where you want to park. That is the ideal mommy spot to park in because you're going to unload your children and put them in the cart and then, oh no, you have to put the cart away and the cart rack is far away. Thousands of people go missing every year. Let's make sure it's not your kids. So park near a cart area where you can put your little cart back and not be far from your children. This is my favorite tip because I think it's genius, but it's also taken me a couple years to get this one down. You know how you put your kids' shoes on and before they even get in the car, they take them off and then you put them back on and then they're in the car and they take them off again? Yeah. Yeah, and then you have to put them on a third time when you get to the store and figure out where they threw them? My solution is, just don't put shoes on them. What you do instead is by each car seat, you put a bin, which you put their shoes in. So when you show up to your destination, you put the shoes on at that moment. Not for the third time, but for the first time. And you're saving yourself a little bit of brain power because you will never be without shoes. They will always be in your car. Number nine, eat well. And don't abuse caffeine. Now, I know I talked about drinking caffeine earlier, but you really want to make sure you save the caffeine for the roughest days. And it's going to seem like every day is rough, but I promise you there are some days that are a lot more insane than others. And that is when you want the caffeine to work. Also, keep in mind, you're trying to squeeze in naps here and there when you can. And you're trying to recover at night from giving birth to a human being, you're going to need to have quality REM sleep. If you're pumped full of caffeine, that is going to be increasingly difficult. If you're going to try to get a nap in the day, but you're pumped with caffeine, you're not going to be able to take an efficient nap because it's going to take forever for your mind to wind down. You also don't want to burn out your adrenals. That is a very common thing that happens around this time. You take some vitamin C, do not overwork them if you can. And caffeine is one of those things that drive them up a wall. So use caffeine very strategically, just like your antibiotics. You don't throw antibiotics at everything, do you? No. Caffeine is a drug and you want to be strategic about it. You don't have to be like me and be all wild and just eat meat to get your energy back or the ketogenic diet. But it does go a long ways just eating a whole foods diet. This is an excellent time to go on a diet. I'm not saying cut calories to try to lose weight. What I'm simply saying is this is a good time to eat quality food. Cut out the sugar. Cut out the packaged food. Eat real food. Get it in your body because it is going to your baby through your milk. Number 10, be kind to yourself. It's a rough season and it's not forever. Just keep in mind, you're sleep deprived. You just gave birth to a tiny human. Your body is trying to get back into shape. You're going to have times where your temper snaps, where you do not feel warm and fuzzy feelings towards your family, where you just feel tired, where you feel like a failure because you are not keeping up. It's only a season. You're in a war zone right now, and it's not going to be forever. You're going to make it. It's going to be okay, mom. What are you most afraid of having a second baby? Let me know down below. And if you have already had a second baby, you're in your third, your fourth, your fifth, let us know what was your best tips. If I missed some, put them down below because we love to learn, we love to share. 
please be helpful. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm rooting for you.